Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Today I'm going to be talking about Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. So right off the bat, I, I don't know again if it's just the time of my life, the place, you know, I'm in. But this and Black Widow are in almost the same category for me, except... I enjoyed Black Widow more, and I can't determine if Shang-Chi is a bad movie. I don't think it is, but it's too busy, and certain parts don't work well for me, which they did in Black Widow. And I'm going to make this comparison, and, you know, because it's one of the last videos I did, um, while I did Suicide Squad. In any case, Shang-Chi is a very busy movie, and I don't buy the main actor. So I guess that's the main thing for me. So it could be a good movie, and it just didn't work for me. But I'll, I'll try to get across what kind of um, tilted it in one side for me. The aspect of the comics that I know... I usually can let it go. You know, the comics are different. These are people's visions of uh, and their stories and their ideas about certain characters. And here we have the Ten Rings, and they tie it into the Iron Man uh, plot of the third movie with the Mandarin. But they're not rings you wear on your fingers. They're rings you wear on your arms. I'm not... I'm okay with that type stuff. However, in the comics, each ring has a certain effect. And that I kind of was annoyed with. And the fact that I don't believe the main character through the movie is another comparison to Black Widow where there's a comic relief in Shang-Chi and I didn't enjoy it that much. Where, when I looked at Black Widow, I thought I was going to be annoyed by this little sister banter. And I quite enjoyed it. This is a different take. It's more like um, sidekick eventually. But I see where they were going. And again, this could be a wrong place, wrong time thing. I might do a podcast. But uh, it's just a certain time in my life things have been going on. and. It could be influencing my judgment or my objectivity and how I view these things, but this is a very busy movie where I didn't buy the main lead. The sidekick started bothering me, and there's just so much going on. There's some great visuals, some great concepts, and I'll get another comparison. There's a, there's a part in Black Widow where they're fighting on debris that's falling from the sky. And it's ridiculous. And even though my brain says, okay, I know Black Widow does not have a super soldier serum. She's peak human in the sense of like a Batman, maybe. But she's doing insane things. So, but I can deal with it. And it worked for me. Like, I was like, okay. But the moment that Black Widow breathes and, you know, give you the little highs and lows in the story, I found myself more entertained. This one. I just found myself kind of annoyed. So much comedy, so much going on, and some scenes were innovative. And, and again, another comparison to Black Widow. I thought the movie should have ended, and then it kept going. <laughs> so Black Widow kind of does it, but again, I, it didn't stick with me. It didn't resonate as something that uh, I was bothered by. I was like, okay, oh, all right. You know, this is what they're doing. But in, in Shang-Chi, I'm like, you got to be fucking kidding me. We're going to do more stuff. And this stuff is so elaborate. And getting back to one of my first points, when you have the ten rings and you can't tell exactly what they do except move things around, um, you know, like, like I said, in the comics, it's one's cold, Ray, one's freeze. Um, they all have a... Uh, a, 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 a specific thing they can do. And some might overlap in a sense, but in here, 
it's just like a power enhancer and certain effects you can do, but it's never solely determined. And then there's this subplot I didn't buy, another comparison to Black Widow. <laughs> the subplot in Black Widow is ridiculous. This guy's using pheromones to control a, a generation after generation of Black Widows, which are females he takes from whatever families and brainwashes them and they become assassins. And then you get the sister. This subplot is, you know, spoilers and everything, warning, I guess, is like the Shang-Chi's father believes that his wife is trying to contact him from another realm that's hidden behind a special dimensional portal from a special land. Now, this is another reason why it's too much Iron Fist, and I'll get to that maybe, but you already have this place, Kun Long. You have Iron Fist, and when you, when, when, as a fan as I am of Shang-Chi in the comics, which I kind of am, I like when he shows up, but I don't remember ever collecting a lot of his stuff, except for maybe having a lot in the late 70s, um, a lot of his team-ups, and, you know, always liked his appearances here and there. This is insane stuff for the character. And again, maybe it's the actor. I don't know. He seems pretty good with the martial arts. Um, so, I, I, you know, I can't pinpoint it to an exact thing. But in a way, the parts didn't come together well with me, I guess. And it, it kind of influenced my looking back on it. I don't feel... Um, this excitement to watch it again, and there's a excitement to watch Black Widow again, and I don't, again, when I did my Black Widow podcast, uh, I specified, like, I, I didn't, I haven't gone into exactly what's going on or what happened, but I'm in a bad place in my head, kind of, and I went into Black Widow totally expecting to dislike it, and was very pleased. This one. I kind of had more of excitement going in. Maybe that's the trade-off here. There's some scale in my fucking head that is like, okay, become one, maybe tone down that excitement, and I wouldn't be surprised if people would say to me, you know, Chang Chi is way better than Black Widow. Well, you know, and just have a debate or a talk about that. So this is another movie that, um, you know, it kind of fits in there with... uh some of the others that um, just don't wow me. I'm glad it's made. I would rather have seen an Iron Fist uh, movie or at least an appearance. You do get tie-ins to, like I said, Iron Man and Doctor Strange. The acts of this movie, like I said, are uh, so built up and so outlandish that it's kind of refreshing to see. But Again, I can't put my finger on what made Black Widow more enjoyable for me than this. Is it the combination of lighting and fast-moving things? Whereas, I don't know, my brain works better with debris falling from the sky than it does with magical dragons or something like that. And I don't know. Uh, this is just one of those movies that, you know, I might come back and visit this at another time and actually have a different perspective like i said you know you need some time and distance um you know to separate yourself from things that happen in life and things that are going on there's not much um really to say there's a um a kind of teaser at the end that's uh, a lead into doctor strange they had a part in the movie that kind of uh already alluded to things because one of the subplots has to do with the mandarin and there's a uh, an actual appearance from um Wu, i think from dr strange and it's in the beginning or sort of early when shang chi's got to get on this quest and um again I, like i said there's things i'm i'm letting slip by with like the sister he has and this whole family thing, and then I didn't buy the mother's death type thing. Like, it, it almost, you know, spoilers, whatever, but now that I'm thinking about it, 
So the father thinks the mother's contacting him from the dead, from this other place at the portal, but there's a story told in flashbacks throughout the movie, and the people in the special place don't want you to leave. She leaves, has a kid, gets married, you know that story. Then, the, um, uh, she fights them and she dies, like, but they go visit this place and there's this great actress, Michelle Yeoh, I think. It's just some crazy stuff and it just didn't make sense to me, like, as I was trying to piece it together, whereas in Black Widow, my brain's bouncing around, like, how ridiculous it is, but I'm having fun with it. And I guess that sums it up in a sense of fun. Uh, I, I didn't have my, find myself having a lot of fun in Shang-Chi, and, you know, and where my brain was going with some of these things. So there's a, um, you know, maybe a disconnect there. Like, like I said, I, I didn't buy the actor, and even in the trails, I was trying to let it go, the, some of the setups and some of the things they were doing. So I don't know about, um, how quick I'll return to this and how uh, excited I'll be going in, given some time to separate things that are happening or happened. But you know what? This is one of, this isn't one of those movies like uh, Green Lantern. I know I like, uh, but I know why it's bad. Um, this is one of those Thor twos for me. It, it, it interests me concepts and who they bring in and what was going on, but didn't quite, Fit it right. As a matter of fact, I probably like Thor 2 better than this. I don't know if that says a lot for this movie. <laughs> and again, uh, uh, the teaser at the end is kind of alluding to things, and you're, you're wondering if there's going to be a connection and what will it be. And I'm going to give a spoiler, so here's another warning. Uh, by the end of the movie, Shang Chi has the Ten Rings, which I find ridiculous. It's always been an Iron Man villain type thing, and it's okay if you want to change it, fine. They're not rings, but they're wrist bracelet kung fu things. And now the heroes got them, and at the end, Wu shows up again. He's like, Shang-Chi, you got the ten rings. And I don't know, I guess that's supposed to be exciting for people. I wasn't just, uh, I just rolled my eyes kind of like, you know, maybe something that's been bubbling in me is coming to surface if I'm evaluating this. Uh, I know there are things that have to do with contracts and certain networks, but I'm almost maybe bothered, a little annoyed that Netflix people haven't shown up. And I know there were talks of contracts. With the guy from Daredevil showing up in the Spider-Man movie. But there's some of the best work Marvel has done is on those series. Especially Jessica Jones, Luke Cage. I'm even a fan of uh, Iron Fist. I'm a fan of it all. Although, again, just like Green Lantern, I kind of know why. Is some people think it's bad or can legitimately say it's, you know wasn't done well, but I enjoy it. So, I don't know. Shang-Chi's sitting in a weird place for me something that um i thought i would give a second chance on watching and just didn't um catch me it didn't uh you know resonate well with me there are a ridiculous amount of things i tolerate and i described that in my super uh, suicide squad movie and the tone the director's going for this seemed to be um, consistent and work, but again, if if I if I didn't buy it from the beginning of the character, I don't know how well the movie was going to work in any case for me. And I guess that's where I come back to with this uh, Shang Chi, the main lead actor. I kind of don't buy him as Shang Chi, and maybe there's some sort of um. Uh, like I said, disconnect that is really making a pretty good movie seem just a little um, like it, it might amplify everything else around it. Like 
the the sidekick who is funny at times but starts to annoy me and then they put her in positions where she's got to be prominent and do certain things that you know kind of save the day type thing you know it didn't work for me like whereas again another comparison with black widow you know the sister's a brainwashed uh assassin and she breaks out of it after a mission and there's this i don't know this threat level and confidence and understanding you have a, what our capabilities are no matter how well you think the you know choreography is in the fighting this is a supposed to be a bus drive well, I don't know she's a fucking bus driver she just took over the bus because it was going out of control yeah, chef or some fucking whatever and um they don't maybe they hint that she has like fucking you know she took uh tiger showman karate classes or taekwondo when she was fucking younger i don't know but there's a clear indication of shang chi and his sister's history the father the training the mother the special uh place the mother came from that type of thing and this sidekick person just doesn't work well. I didn't um, see the need to put her in these certain conditions at the end. I could have understood the um, what the fuck is going on grounding Shang Chi aspect, which I liked. Right, so Shang Chi has to reconcile with his youth, um, who he is, who his father is, and how he's lied all these years after he left. Uh, a pretty cool interaction with his sister who he's abandoned for 15 years she's like you know fighting doing underground fighting where that's where Wu shows up and from you gather from the sidekick uh is you know it just doesn't feel like she's got any skills in the area that would help us survive but that she is that humanity that grounds shang chi when he has to Reconcile with his father, his past, his magical land, uh, magical rings, and the shit they can do. And it didn't work for me in the long run. And I don't like putting the sidekick and all of a sudden giving them a special power. There's a game I play called Marvel Future Fight. I did a podcast on it a long time ago. She's in the fucking game, the sidekick, with an Asian robe and with a bow. Okay? And I don't know why the fuck she's in the game. And it just shows you, like, uh, a little thing like that bothers me where giving Black Widow's sister, her family, the spy training, brainwashed uh, skills, even if they're a little extraordinary, this seems to fit. I don't know. I go on and on about this. Um, It just gives me that much debate in my head, like, as I try to reconcile with staring at the movie poster that I'm using as a thumbnail type thing. And I'm like, um, I like the fathers. I like the actor. I even like the sidekick actor, the sister. There are aspects I like, um, and which is why I don't immediately just say, oh, this was a badly made movie uh, all across the board. So there you go. My jumbled mess of a Shang-Chi <laughs> review, I guess. Um I think it's worth it to watch. It's got some great concepts, visual arts that go for it here and there. We're a little down to earth fighting, but you know, guys got to have fucking razor hands or the razor fist, but it works, you know, in a uh, down to earth level where you can see things clearly. And then they do kind of things where you're on a fucking catwalk at night or whatever, and it's some construction in the building, whatever the fuck, and it's, you, you kind of can't tell what's going on. And then they have fucking, you know, uh, I don't know, oriental dragon mythology shit coming in from this special land. And it gets fucking crazy. Give it a shot, I guess. I would recommend it in that way. You're a fan of these things. Um, I don't think it's a bad movie. However, it doesn't sit well with me. And I guess that'll be it. Hope everybody's doing well. Take care. My best to you and yours.